Hello everyone, welcome back to the native mobile programming course, this time for the third week. Yeah? Last week we have already learned about creating a new Android Studio project, then we learned the basic concepts behind an Android application. Yeah, for today, we will try to create a more sophisticated Android application. Yeah? We will create a SpongeBob quiz. So this application will test our knowledge yeah, or the user's knowledge of a beginner's bottom world. Uh, our application will display a series of questions. Then the users will need to answer either true or false yeah, according to the question. Okay, so we will need to prepare uh, some steps yeah? uh, for today's steps. We will create a new project. And for Ubaya students, please pay attention to the naming convention there, yeah? SNRP underscore then uh, the project name. Yeah, so let's do this first or the zero step first. Yeah, let's create a new project. I will create a new project here. Again, selecting empty activity for now. Then I will name my application SpongeBob. Um, let's see. I will name it SpongeBob Quiz instead. Yeah. Okay, so I have already SpongeBob Quiz in my uh, safe location here. So maybe uh, I will rename it to SpongeBob Quiz 2. Yeah, that's fine. For you, please name SpongeBob or SpongeBob Quiz. Yeah, and for Ubaya students, please don't forget to append S and RP underscore uh, here. Yeah, so for example, S one six zero four twenty zero 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 underscore something like this. Yeah, I will just use this name SpongeBob Quiz two for now, and then leave the minimum SDK to API twenty one. Then just click finish. Yeah, and then wait until the Android Studio finish preparing our project. Yeah, uh, gradual build. Just leave it as it is. Yeah, let's talk about the steps needed to create this application. Yeah, after we have created our new project, then we will we will need to import the image. Yeah, I have provided the image for you. Yeah, later when needed, I will give you the link to the image yeah. for Ubaya students. You can always download it from your Google Classroom. Yeah, for everyone else, I will give the link to the image in the description below uh, at the specific video yeah, after this. And then if you want, also you can use your own image. Yeah. Then we will do the layout, creating questions and finally coding the interactions. Yeah, I will uh, divide today's topic into uh, two videos only. Yeah. yeah, after this, we will continue importing the image and doing the layout. Yeah. And then for the next video, we will tr try to create some questions and code the interactions. Okay. So the first step is to import the image. Yeah, for OPI students, please open Google Classroom. And then download the background.png. Yeah, let's see. Okay, this is my file explorer. Then I have downloaded it to. Let's see, where's my NMP? Okay, this one. This one. Yeah, this one, yeah, background.png. Uh, this is a sample image of the bikinis bottom inhabitants yeah uh, spongebob here patrick and so on if you want uh, you can also use your own image for everyone else you can uh, download it from the link i'll provide below yeah okay after you have downloaded your image yeah then please right click and then choose copy yeah as usual uh, I'm really sorry because my Windows in, is in Bahasa, so it's salin instead of copy. Yeah, or you can just press Ctrl C on your background file, and then go to your Android Studio. Yeah, make sure your Gradle has finished. Then open your Crash folder and choose the drawable folder. 
Uh, you can simply control V here, or you can also right click then select paste. Okay, now you are created with the uh, choose destination directory. Yeah, uh, we have two directories here, drawable and drawable V24. For now, please choose drawable first. Yeah, and then click OK. For the new name, just leave the image name as it is for now. Yeah, if you download that your uh, the image I have provided to you, then uh, just leave it. Yeah, but if you download uh, image from somewhere else, yeah, uh, maybe the file name is very long and contains some special characters or maybe numbers. Yeah, please rename it to something simpler. Yeah, and please do not use any special characters. Yeah, why? Because the image file name will be used as the image identifier in Android Studio. Yeah, so please do not use any special characters. Do not start with special characters. Yeah, um, number I think it's okay, but uh, let's uh, agree that we don't start our image file name or image ID with a number. Yeah, just use a character like this background, and then click OK. You can check that your background PNG has been imported. Yeah, over here. Now, do the same thing again, but this time choose the drawable V24. Yeah, again, make sure that the new name is the same as the name you have used in the previous step, yeah, in the drawable, and then click OK. And if you see at the Project Explorer, yeah, here, uh, it looks like I have a new folder, which is a background, but actually uh, it consists of two images. Yeah, One is background PNG and one is background PNG, but it is labeled V24. Yeah, why we do this actually? Okay, trouble, repeat, it's okay. Important to not use spaces and so on, yeah? Okay, so why we must paste it twice, yeah? So, drawable folders are for providing different screen densities for device compatibility and for different Android versions. Yeah, for instance, the V24, or actually it refers to the API level 24, yeah, it offers better image quality and resolutions compared to the versions uh, below 24, yeah, uh, which is the default drawable. So Drawable V24 offers better image quality and better resolutions. Yeah, so if you want, uh, you can actually provide two versions of the image, yeah, but please name it the same. Uh, one is for Drawable and one is for Drawable V24. Yeah, however, in this project, we will just use the same image for simplicity. Okay, so that's all on importing new images. Yeah, it's just as simple as copying and pasting to the rest drawable folder, then name it. Yeah, uh, you must remember this uh, naming convention to not use spaces and any special characters. Yeah, that's all. Now, let's do the layout first for the image. Yeah, and before you continue, yeah, if you arrived at this video for the first time, then maybe you missed uh, my previous video about new Android projects, yeah, uh, I have explained about layouting over there. So if you are not familiar with doing layout for Android Studio projects, please watch my video first. Yeah, I will give you the link in the description below, or maybe uh, I hope I don't forget this. Yeah, um, I will give the link also in maybe at the upper right side of this video. Yeah, you can click there and please watch uh, the concept of layouting first before continuing to here. Okay, let's do the layouting on the activity main. Open the activity main XML. Yeah, and okay, I will zoom out first. 
you will have a constraint layout with a text view. Yeah, I think I will delete the text view first. Yeah, although actually it is used later. But yeah, uh, let's start fresh with just a constraint layout. Yeah, then uh, to display an image, sorry, yeah, to display an image, we need the image view widget. Okay, let's see. Image view, you can find it here immediately. Yeah? Image view, just drag from the palette and drop it over here. Then Android Studio will immediately ask you to pick a resource. Please pick your background image. Then click OK. Yeah, now uh, you have your background image shown here. Yeah, you can uh, move it to here, for example. Yeah, and then we will adjust the layout height to 200 dp. So the height is only 200 dp. Don't forget the dp, yeah, or you will get an error later. 200 dp and the scale type is changed to center crop. Okay, let's find the ah, this one. Yeah, scale type, change it to center crop. Okay, and then you will see I have an error here because I have not provided any constraint. Yeah, let's do that for the constraint. Oh, yeah. Uh, before we continue, uh, there is a blueprint view at the right side of our layout. Yeah, this feature actually displays the exact outlines of any particular widgets on our currently opened layout. This will help Android developers, yeah, us in this case, to get a proper and clean idea about spacing and margins as well. Yeah, this one. So uh, here I know that this uh, widget is actually an image view. Okay, let's do the constraints. Uh, we will need to connect the left and right constraint. Okay, let's do that. Yeah, for the left constraint, I will connect it to the left side of this screen. For the right constraint, I will connect it. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it should be this one. Let's connect it to the right side of the screen. Yeah, if you have difficulties to select your left or right constraint because it is right at the, right at the edge of the screen, uh, you can simply just use plus buttons here. Yeah, uh, I don't have any plus buttons because I have already connected my constraints. Okay, and then do the same thing for the top handle. Let's do that. Yeah, the top constraint is connected to the top side for the screen. And then make sure that the margin for top, left, and right are zero. Yeah, make sure you set all constraint margin to zero. Okay, now change the layout width to 0 dp or match constraint. Yeah, for now, uh, it is set to wrap content. Yeah, actually, for now, it looks like our, or in this case, my image view, yeah, my image view has already uh, stretched to the left and the right side of the screen, in this case, my screen. Yeah, but if you change the screen, then yeah, for now, the image is large enough to actually cover the entire screen's width. Yeah, but maybe if you have a smaller screen, then you will see here that my image is actually not yeah, enough to cover the entire screen's width. Yeah, that's why in this step, we will change the layout width to 0 dB or match constraint. Let's do that and see the difference. Yeah. Uh, for now, uh, I actually changed my layout to a template, but later I will go back to uh, phone. Yeah. Uh, this is just to illustrate the difference between wrap content and match constraint. Yeah. And actually, I have explained it to you last week. But let's 
look the difference yeah this is snap content now if we change it to zero tp or match constraint then my image view will automatically stretch to the screen width yeah as you can see here compare it to the content like this yeah so if you want for your image or actually any widgets yeah, to fill the entire screens yeah, maybe width or screen height then uh, you must connect uh, both constraints yeah, either horizontally or vertically okay i will change my layout back to um i guess it's pixel or pixel 2 yeah something like this and that's all for our image yeah simply right? simple right next we will add some text or label yeah actually i have deleted my hello world yeah uh, that's fine let's just add another text view here and it says uh, change the layout width to Match constraint also. Okay, let's do that. Yeah, although for now we have not created or connected our constraints, yeah. So uh, we don't see any immediate effect. Yeah, we will get it later. That's fine. Okay, then find the gravity property and tick for the center value. Yeah, uh, for gravity, just search it here. Gravity and then click center yeah again uh, you won't see any immediate effect yeah but we will see later after we have connected the constraints and set the id to txt question yeah um, usually i don't use the hungarian notation again yeah but i simply use uh, text then the name question if you are asked to rename, just click refactor. Then your text view will have uh, ID of text question. Yeah, or if you want to follow uh, the slides closely, then just type txt question. Yeah? I'll just use text questions. Uh, it is e much easier to spell. Yeah, uh, instead of txt question. Okay, now let's do the constraint. We will connect this top constraint to the bottom constraint of the image view here. And let's just connect the horizontal constraint, uh, both of them. And you will immediately see the effect of setting the gravity to center and the layout width to match constraint. Yeah, I will zoom in. You will see that now my text is centered and the width of text view is the same as the width of my screen. Okay, readjust the position uh, here. The margin is 32. Let's do that. Yeah, or you can use any margin as you wish yeah yeah if you feel that uh, this is too narrow then uh, you can widen it yeah if you feel that this is too wide then you can just narrow it okay that's about the question yeah we will use this text view uh, to display the question the next step we will add some buttons which are true button and false button okay let's do this drag two buttons yeah just leave them as they are for now yeah I, we have two buttons Rearrange the button so one is at the left side and the other on the right side. Yeah, maybe like this, but uh, we have not set the constraint for now. Yeah, we will adjust later. 
change the left button ID to button true and text to true. Yeah, again, if you want to follow the Hungarian notation, uh, you can just use PTN true. Yeah, but I will leave the name uh, using button, button true, like this. Again, simply click refactor. And connect the constraint handle, okay. For the top constraint, connect, connect it to the bottom constraint of the text question. Like this. Give them some space. Yeah, uh, I will give them uh, the margin of, okay lah, uh, 36, yeah. I think that's fine. And for the left constraint, let's connect it to the left side of the screen and give them some space also. Yeah, maybe 28 is fine, yeah. And change the text to true. Okay, and let's do the opposite for the right button. Yeah, connect the top constraint to the bottom constraint of our text question here. Yeah, or if you want to align, yeah, you can also do this. Yeah, if you want to align uh, the false button uh, to to be the same uh, position uh, for the top with this true button. I can delete this constraint and I will move it everywhere for now. You can also constrain it to the top constraint of the true button. Yeah, then your false button will be in the same height as the true button. Yeah, if I move this true button elsewhere, the false button will closely resemble uh, at least for the top position, is still the same as the true button. Yeah, if I connect this to here, yeah, and then it's time I move my true button around, you will need also to move this false button. Yeah, so there are actually two ways of connecting this uh, top constraint of the false button. Yeah, you can choose any one of them. As you wish. I connect like this yeah, to the true button inside of the bottom of text question. Then uh, the text is changed to false. And the button is ID, the button ID is button false. Refactor again. And remember here, yeah, if you still get the error icon, uh, which is a round exclamation mark icon. Yeah, it usually means that you forgot to do any constraint. Yeah, uh, it says uh, missing constraint. Yeah, I have constrained my false button vertically, but I have not constrained it horizontally. Yeah, so let's do that. Uh, connect the right constraint of this false button to the right side of the screen yeah then give it the same uh, margin for the true button is 24 then let's give 24 also yeah 24 24 okay nice and i think that 52 db from the text view or text question to the button True is too far away. Uh, okay, let's see. Yeah, I think 36 is good enough. Yeah. Okay, I will make sure that the margin is the same. I accidentally moved my true button in the horizontal position. Yeah, for the left constraint is 28, but this one is 24. Okay. I will change this to 24. Yeah, it's only for aesthetic only. Uh, you can uh, change it as you wish. Okay, so I think we have done these steps. Uh, the steps also, we have done it. 
Now, uh, if you take a look at the component tree, we have four warnings yeah, over here, uh, as also illustrated in this image. Yeah. Uh, we have the warning for the image view, low constraint. Okay, it's actually differ with uh, this one, yeah. uh, but that's fine. Uh, we can click at this icon. Yeah, oh, it's actually a uh, low contrast, yeah. Um, it's not low constraint, yeah, low contrast. Okay, uh, I guess you, we can just ignore this warning for the low contrast. Yeah, but we have another uh, warnings. Yeah, one uh, is an image without a content description, and we have three hard coded text. Usually, we can just ignore these warnings, yeah, but if you don't want uh, to have any warnings in your layout, then let's try to address these warnings, yeah. Because warnings in layout may affect the user experience in some cases, yeah. Not always, but sometimes they do affect the user experience. For example, for the image without content description, yeah, uh, for us uh, normal people, it's actually fine. But for people with disabilities, yeah, for example, maybe they need to activate uh, the screen reader features, yeah, which uh, reads everything on the screen. If we don't specify any content description for our image, then the screen reader may not realize that there is an image in our application. The user will not know that we have an image over there. Yeah, so it is a good idea to describe our image by setting the text later for the content description. And then for the hard-coded text, this is actually uh, only matters when we develop our application for uh, multi-language. Yeah. For a single language application, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, but nevertheless, let's try to address these warnings. Okay, uh, we can fix this. Yeah, actually, let's see. Yeah, we can open or expand this warning hard coded string text view. Uh, for this one, actually, we can ignore them. Uh, let's see. Yeah, for text view, uh, we can simply just delete it for now. Yeah, just uh, remove the text within the text attribute. Because we will uh, change the text of this text question at runtime with our question. Yeah, so just leave it empty. For the true button, oh, this is actually for false, yeah. Okay. For the true button, I think it's at the bottom here. Hard coded string true. Yeah, there are actually two ways of fixing this. Uh, error, yeah. The first uh, way is to open the value and strings XML. Yeah, let's do this first here yeah, before uh, I give you the second way uh, by using this fix button. Let's follow the slide, then open the value folder. You will see strings.xml over here. Yeah, actually, the strings.xml holds any string resources for our application. Yeah, as you can see here, we have already one string resource, which is app name, our application name. Yeah, here uh, I get my application name is SpongeBob Quiz 2. Yeah, this is the very same uh, project name as we entered in when creating a new Android Studio project. Yeah, your uh, app name may differ from mine. Okay, let's add another string resource by uh, typing string and then we'll give a name of um, label true. Then we give the value of true. Yeah, and then go back to your layout, activity main layout. Yeah, and then make sure that your true button is already selected. Then go to the attributes 
you know, find the text attribute. If you see here, there is actually a very small button that you can click. Yeah, just click here. Then select your string resource you have created. Yeah, in this case, the name is label underscore true, which the value is true. Then click OK. Yeah, now your text attribute will say something like this at string slash label true. Yeah, this actually refers to the strings.xml to the string that which name is label true. Yeah, and you can see here my warning has disappeared for the button true. Yeah, there is how you fix the layout warning for this uh, first way yeah, uh, as provided in the slide. The second way uh, you can also use these uh, warnings, yeah, warning panel or message panel at the bottom of your Android Studio screen. Then you can just click fix here. Yeah, fix. Resource name, let's give it label false. For the value, you can just leave it false, yeah, either uppercase or lowercase, yeah, because by default our buttons are in uppercases, yeah, uppercase text. Leave everything as they are, yeah, as it is, then click OK. Yeah, and then uh, you will see that for my false button, the text attribute is also changed into add string slash label underscore false. If you take a look at your strings XML, we have a new resource which name is label underscore false and the value is also the string false. Yeah, so uh, you can do either way to actually fix this layout warning. Yeah, the same for the image. Yeah, we must uh, give the content description as uh, any value. Uh, let's fix it. Fix. Yeah, but now it says to do instead of uh, anything I want. Okay, hard coded text. Uh, I will fix this. And uh, not to do, but uh, image background. Uh, image of bikini bottom uh, people or inhabitants or anything uh, you want to describe your image. Yeah? Okay, I'll click OK. And now my layout is free of any warnings. Yeah, and you can see here on the image background, then I have an image of bikini bottom. Not uh, bikini bottom, not, <laughs> not like this, yeah. Bottom, I'm sorry. Yeah, bikini bottom people. Yeah, but uh, I think from next week, yeah, um, let's just ignore this warning, yeah, the hard coded text. It actually only matters when you want to create a multi language application. Yeah, this is the suggested way of labeling any widget or any views, yeah, uh, buttons, then text views, and so on. Why? Because uh, by doing this way, we can translate our strings very quick. Yeah. Okay, uh, I will just illustrate to you, yeah, this is not in the slide, but uh, I think it's nice to know uh, why Android Studio uh, suggest us to use this approach here instead of just uh, why don't we just type our text over here yeah why we must use the strings dot xml values one reason is for translating yeah, okay uh, here my android says uh, my android studio says edit translations for our locales in the translation editor okay let's open the editor yeah, uh, for now I have only English in my language, but if I want to add an another local, yeah, I, I can click it over here and then uh, I can select 
my language yeah, because I am Indonesian, so I will select Bahasa Indonesia. For everyone else, uh, you can choose your own native language. Yeah? Uh, ID, where is it? Ah, this one. Indonesian in I Indonesia, ID. Okay, and then uh, I can translate my strings directly here. Yeah. For example, true is benar. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I must... Um, let's see. I can double click here and translate it immediately. True is benar. And false is salah. For image of bikini bottom people, um, gambar penduduk bikini bottom. Yeah, uh, this way uh, we can translate our strings quickly and in a centralized way. Uh, you can imagine if you hard code the text over here, yeah, then you want to create a multi-language application, then uh, you must uh, do a different approach. Yeah? Maybe changing the language from code, yeah, which is not optimal at all. So let's see um, how this affects our application. Yeah, And actually, I have not started my AVD. Yeah? So uh, I will start my AVD then because it uh, may take some time, then I will just skip my video until my uh, application is already displayed over here, yeah? Yeah, okay. And actually, I have an uh, error, I think. Let's see. Yeah, maybe uh, I, don't, I don't really hope this also happens to you, but uh, as you can see, my emulator suddenly finds this. Yeah, it closes itself on its own. Uh, let's try again. Starting AVD, okay. Now, if you experience the same as mine, yeah, your AVD suddenly closes. Yeah, then uh, usually I will do this. Yeah, for my AVD, I will just call put. Yeah, this forces my AVD to restart from the original. Uh, condition yeah it's roughly the same as restarting your smartphone yeah so i will start restart my uh, pixel 2 here and as you can see now my uh, emulator does not close Okay, while waiting, uh, I will skip the video until my application is already displayed to my pixel. Yeah, uh, please wait a second. Okay, now, yeah, as you can see here, I have uh, my button is true and false. Yeah, but my language for my emulator is actually in English. Yeah, if I change my native language or my local, let's see where is it. Yeah. Uh, I will change my other language. Language. Hmm, it's not here. Let's see, where is it? Ah, system. Languages. Languages again. And I want to add a new language, which is... Uh, where is it? Yeah, I, 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 Indonesia. Okay, and you can see here the language is still in English. Uh, I will swap these two so that now my emulator is in Bahasa. Yeah, please pardon me for all English. Uh, people out there, yeah. For now, uh, I will show uh, the application or the emulator in Bahasa, yeah. But only for a brief moment, yeah. As you can see here, my application immediately switched to Indonesian or Bahasa, yeah. So my button is now instead of true, it says benar, yeah. The Bahasa Indonesia for true. 
Yeah, for the button false, it now reads salah instead of false. Yeah, this is how you actually uh, create a um, multi-language application. Yeah, so that's why Android Studio suggests us to use string values yeah, instead of hard code our text in the text attribute. Yeah, but later for the rest of this course, we will just use a single language, which is in English. So next, let's just ignore the hard-coded string or hard-coded text warnings, yeah? Okay, I will change back the language of my emulator to English. Yeah, to uh, so that everyone is on the same port as mine. I will change it into English US. Then, yeah, I go back to my application and it says true and false again, yeah, as in English instead of Bahasa. Okay, then, so we have finished layouting our application yes our spongebob quiz for the next video we will try to add some questions and then do the interactions for button true and button false yeah for now they do nothing okay we will do it on the next video so please don't go anywhere yeah uh, let's continue on the next video